Hello ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, in his out, and in between us. My name's Dan and welcome back to another Pack Reports. It's Thursday, June the 18th, 2020. Well, I'm sure by now you all know how I like to get people talking in the comments of these videos, especially over some of the stories that really divide the camps. And as we've not really had any COVID related stories for a while, I thought I'd start today with one that really caused some controversy in the comments last time it was mentioned. Well, a member of the public, Martin Redston, together with his legal team, have filed papers at the High Court bringing a legal challenge to Max Hill QC, the Director of Public Prosecutions for the CPS, over claims that he failed to investigate alleged lockdown breaches by Dominic Cummings. Mr Redston, from London, insists that he has followed the coronavirus lockdown rules, has raised almost £20,000 online for the court challenge and claims it is urgent to counter a Cummings effect. I love that phrase. Which he says is undermining the government message. He says the rule of law should apply for all persons, irrespective of any friendships in government. <laughs> Which I completely agree with. Everyone is and should be subjected to exactly the same rule of law. Although I think there are much more relevant cases to bring this up over rather than Dominic Cummings, which although I still believe he had other choices, is being brought against him for the wrong reasons. My lawyers have lodged proceedings in the High Court to seek an urgent judicial review of the Director of Public Prosecutions in action over the alleged breaches of the coronavirus regulations by Dominic Cummings, he said. One particular concern is the so-called Cummings effect or Cummings defence, which has meant that people who previously were complying with the regulations have sought to not adhere to them fully. Grounds include complaint of lack of appearance of independence to the Director of Public Prosecution's decision making. Part of the complaint being placed before the High Court is that Attorney General Suella Braverman defended Dominic Cummings despite holding a role which involves overseeing the work of the CPS, meaning she should be completely impartial. Mr Redston initiated legal action after writing to the CPS to demand a statement saying it was investigating the matter. Once that deadline had passed, papers were filed at the High Court. The Crown Prosecution Service has said it will defend the judicial review action, insisting that criminal investigations are police matters. To investigate. But this isn't a criminal investigation, is it? The Huffington Post has reported that for a third time all coronavirus prosecutions under the Coronavirus Act have had to be dropped due to none of the prosecutions being found to apply to potentially infectious people, which is what the Act was initially designed to cover. Now I have to say that in the short time I've had to research this, I haven't found another outlet reporting the same information. Must make that clear. It is said that out of 271 charges under the Health Protection Regulations, a separate piece of legislation introduced alongside the Coronavirus Act, 20 were found to have been unlawful, including four homeless people who were wrongly prosecuted for being outside. Two further cases charged in breach of the regulations were withdrawn from court because apparently Welsh regulations had been used in England and two were pulled because of lack of evidence. Now you certainly would have thought three months in, the police and the CPS would certainly have got their act together by now, but it seems as though because of the powers that these organizations hold, they can simply get away with abusing the powers and simply brushing it all under the carpet, even when they make mistakes on such an industrial scale. Avon and Somerset Police Constable PC Tim Silverwood is appearing at Bristol Magistrates Court today after being charged with theft. 45-year-old Silverwood has been charged in connection with the theft of £2,750 and €550 Euros from another person on October the 16th, 2019. Now I'm going to follow this up when I find out the outcome of today's hearing and I will let you know, hopefully, tomorrow. Labour Chairman Linda Meehan has been criticised largely including by members of her own party, after replying to a tweet referring to pissing on a statue of Winston Churchill. The initial tweet that read, 
Fuck Churchill, he was a racist, narcissist, imperialistic scumbag. I'd happily piss on his grave. Received a reply from Meehan stating, so would I. Which, if it wasn't bad enough, was posted on the 76th anniversary of D-Day, June the 6th, and also the same day a statue of Churchill, Churchill was defaced with graffiti calling him a racist during a Black Lives Matter protest. Brendan O'Brien, a member of the Watford constituency Labour Party, said, I strongly support the removal of statues of slave traders and other historical figures that are offensive. They should have been taken down a long time ago. Then you're an idiot. Because hiding history is not going to help with the future, you utter cockwomble. However, he says, as a member of Watford Labour Party, I want to disassociate myself from this crude tweet. Churchill was a conservative and he is known to have expressed opinions on race that were prejudiced and wrong. I know how strongly my own grandparents, miners and trade unionists opposed Churchill politically. But in 1940, they readily supported him in order to defeat the vilest racism that had ever been seen. So what you're saying is he wasn't really all that bad. Seems a bit hypocritical to me. He went on, this crass tweet can only help at the far right and so division. Says someone promoting the biggest act of division I think I have ever seen in my entire life. Me and much might like most of these people who are so seriously lacking a backbone went on the defensive and tried to convince people that she should have been clearer in the response in her tweet and she did not endorse the act of pissing on Churchill's grave and apologised for any offence caused with the tweet soon disappearing. I mean, I really wish that people would stand by their convictions. If you have something to say or an opinion, stick to it. Stop changing it in order to pander to people or public opinion. Deleting tweets is pathetic. It simply shows that you are a complete backwards, spineless, pathetic cretin who simply doesn't deserve to be involved in any kind of politics or argument for that matter if you're so easily swayed into changing your beliefs or apologising for them just because you have other motives. A 16 year old rapist has been spared jail and instead he's being punished by taking walks with his social worker. The boy who was 14 at the time of the attack who admitted rape and sexual assault was told by a judge if he was 18 he would have been looking at a jail term in double figures. But instead, he was sentenced to a referral order, likely to involve socially distanced, <laughs> socially distanced walks with a social worker due to the impact of coronavirus on the youth justice system. District Judge Gwyn Jones, sitting at Laddudno Youth Court, said, You were 14 at the time when these offences came about. If you were over 18, then the starting point as to the length of sentence is likely to be in double figures. The judge said he had two stark sentencing options, detention and training, or a referral order. Judge Jones told the Denbyshire teenager, you and others in the family have had adverse childhood experiences and that's something that, no, that has no doubt affected you. There has been evidence of neglect. The court imposed an intensive 12 month referral order and told the boy who must register as a sex offender for the next two and a half years I very much hope you will take advantage of this opportunity. Now for your information the victim was a family member of this little cunt and all he gets to do is go for walks with a social worker as punishment. The police service of Northern Ireland are being investigated after complaints that they've failed to enforce social distancing regulations consistently during Black Lives Matter protests. Good. <laughs> I am sick of seeing the police allow thousands of people to breach regulations whilst easy targets are bullied and abused by the police. The police ombudsman office said they are reviewing how officers and commanders used the coronavirus public health regulations at large public gatherings and how they issued fixed penalty notices at these events. The move follows complaints from members of the public who attended Black Lives Matter protests at Customs House Square in Belfast and Guildhall Square in Derry on Saturday, June the 6th. 
Mrs Anderson from the police ombudsman said her office has received complaints about the enforcement of the health regulations at the Black Lives Matter protests when compared to other large gatherings such as those seen at beaches and at the Protect Our Statues protest outside Belfast City Hall on Saturday June the 13th and concerns that police had not done enough to enforce the regulations. She added, the powers to enforce the public health regulations came under new legislation and there is the likelihood that they will continue to be enforced for many months to come. It is in the public interest that there be an independent assessment as to whether the associated police policy is being applied consistently. If we identify inconsistencies and can make recommendations which will help improve policing of public gatherings, we will do so promptly. But of course, <laughs> as soon as the protesters get wind of this, they're going to all start to claim oppression and unfair treatment. I just hope that at least someone somewhere has a backbone and manages to investigate and come to a conclusion based on the facts rather than on the names they might get called if they don't find in favour of the protesters. Now, you might be shocked by this, but I refuse to follow the narrative of the mainstream media. And so although they all seem to be calling this following story something that happened at a far-right rally, I will call it for what it actually was. A Black Lives Matter protest. You would have no doubt seen the image a man being carried away from a baying mob of Black Lives Matter protesters by a black man. An image that I believe is being misrepresented and used for political reasons. The guy being carried is apparently Bryn Mayle, an ex-British Transport Police Detective Constable who left the force in 2014. The man being hailed a hero is Patrick Hutchinson. Now, although this is being portrayed as look how wonderful Hutch Hutchinson was stepping in to protect the life of someone opposed to him, I certainly don't think that's the case myself and think this really is one of those perfect moments that people are jumping on to help push the narrative. We already know that protesters from the BLM movement have been and are causing damage to property, criminal damage to property, which is unlawful and illegal, whatever you want to call it it certainly isn't something that should be allowed. And just because people want to go and protect monuments and statues that are part of history, whether it's good or bad history, they're being portrayed as far-right thugs. And I personally still haven't had an explanation or heard an explanation as to how wanting to protect property makes somebody far-right. I mean, it's okay for Mr Hutchinson to want to protect someone from a baying mob of BLM protesters, who Hutchinson himself said... I really feel that if we hadn't intervened when we did, I genuinely think he may have died, and that I didn't do it for him per se, I didn't want to see him perish or die, but I really did it for the young men and women of BLM, proving the point that those there for the so-called protest were the aggressors in this incident, they were the ones attacking and assaulting. I certainly don't, for one minute, think everybody at the protests are there to cause problems. They have something to say, and they have the absolute right to say it. But do they have the right to destroy property without consequence? Do they have the right to attack people without consequence? Because in Hutchinson's own words, they were the attackers, not Bryn Mayle. I don't believe he wouldn't have said something that might have upset the protesters, or probably did. But at that moment, anything you say that they don't want to hear will trigger them. But that doesn't give them the right to assault people, especially when they are the ones crying about injustice to people. I think any half-decent person who was at that protest, or any other protest, who saw one person being attacked by many, would have stepped in. Whether it was a black man being, helped, being beaten by a white man, or a white man being beaten by a black man. He's got nothing to do with fucking skin colour. It's got more to do with morals and not being a complete cut, which many of the protesters are proving themselves to be. And please bear in mind that many of the protesters are white folks, so I'm certainly not making this all about colour. I just think this is being blown out of proportion completely. This was a well-timed snap of a situation that's being used and twisted to fit a narrative rather than simply calling it what it is. One decent human being helping another. 
Isn't it amazing that some countries can cancel a criminal's visa, refuse citizenship, and have them on a plane quickly and deported? But the English authorities who revoke citizenship let the criminals move back to the same town they committed their horrific crimes. Well, I think that says volumes about the kind of government that we have. You know, the ones that are supposed to be doing what's right for us. Christopher Clark Jones, originally from Tyneside, has been serving a life prison sentence in Australia for the murder and decapitation of a young lad in 20, 2005. He has now been released on parole, which happened earlier this month. However, the Aussie authorities have already kicked his ass out of the country by escorting him to a plane and sending him back here. Christopher Clark Jones brutally murdered Morgan Shepherd, a 17-year-old, in Brisbane in 2005 by stabbing him, stabbing him 133 times and then cutting his head off before using it as a bowling ball. The now 36-year-old applied for Australian citizenship but was denied and his visa was cancelled. A Brisbane Supreme Court judge sentenced Jones and James Patrick Rohan to life behind bars after being convicted of murder. At the trial, witnesses said Jones had spoken to friends about using Morgan's head as a bowling ball and a hand puppet. Australian Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton cancelled Jones's visa on character grounds ahead of his release. He told Brisbane's Courier Mail there is no place in the Australian community for foreign nationals who murder Australians. But yet our very own government can't seem to get rid of, of foreign rapists, jihadists, murderers, because their countries don't want them back, so we're stuck with them. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, I don't think. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the government you think are there for you. A big thank you to channel Patreon supporters. Uh, your support is truly appreciated, along with everybody who watches, shares and comments. And that's all I have for you today. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts, as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Good night, all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, hit that subscribe button up the top there. If you haven't already, become a subscriber. That is support enough. Share the videos, comment, like, it all helps. If you're looking for something else to watch, up top there is my latest video. Down the bottom there is a video that YouTube recommends for you.